Hello. Well, let's get this started. I am, in fact, here to talk this morning about uh, getting people to meetings. Um, first, I'm going to check in and see how many people are alive. Oh, how many people are awake? <laughs> Almost as many hands up. Okay, can everybody, every, you, you've all got desk things. Um, okay, so stay in your seats, but put your arms over your head. Reach for the ceiling. Wiggle your toe, wiggle your fingers. <laughs> wiggle your toes too, that's good for you. Everybody give me your best zombie impression. Brain. Excellent, excellent. Good work, good work. All right, now we are here today to talk about getting people to meetings. Um, something we have, uh, everybody has struggled with at one point in time or another, which is why we put together some resources and this presentation for you. Um, here's the first rule of getting people to meetings. Do not, under any circumstances, hold your meetings at 9 a.m. on Saturday during the summer. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, guess what we're doing wrong. Um, so I'm going to actually not use this mic because I'm going to move around a little bit here. The first, actually, most important rule of getting people to show up to your meetings is to have meetings. This kind of sounds like a no-brainer, but I have had student leaders come to me and say, I can't get people to come to my meetings. And I say, okay, well, when are you holding your meetings? Well, well, we, we don't really. Like, okay, well, people can't show up to something that doesn't exist. So step one is to have regular meetings. Um, there's a couple benefits to here. Um, regular meetings establish a routine. This is the regular part of the regular meetings. So if your meetings are every other Monday, your group members will learn that every other Monday is your group's meeting. Um, they will form a habit out of attending. They will start to make room in their schedule for it. And they will know that when someone comes up and says, hey, we want to do this other thing, how's Monday? They will say, oh no, I have a group meeting on Monday. Um, and along with this, remember that small meetings are okay. If you're getting started and you have regular meetings and you have five or six people showing up, that's fine because you can grow from there. Don't have six people at your meetings and say, "Oh, it's a failure. I'm never going to have business. I'm never going to have meetings again," because um, then you're back at the point of not having regular meetings, and that clearly doesn't work. Number two, advertise your meetings. Let's say, imagine for a moment, you're having Richard Dawkins come to your campus to give a lecture. Would you advertise? Absolutely. Absolutely. You'd hang some flyers, maybe do some chalking, maybe take out an ad in your uh, in your newspaper or local radio station. Okay, so maybe we don't need to take out ads in your local newspaper or radio station for every one of your regular meetings, but why aren't you hanging up flyers? They're bright, they're visible, um, and they, they get people to notice you. Uh, they serve two big purposes. It gets you new members, because new people will walk down campus and say, look at that bright pink flyer that says, God is dead, what's that about? <laughs> and they'll stop in to look at it. Um, or, uh, and, uh, so you'll get new members that way. Also, um, your regular media members will be walking down campus and be, wow, look at that bright pink flyer that says, God is dead, that's my group, I need to remember to go to that meeting. Um, and so it reinforces for your own group members where they need to be and when. Um, so talking to flyers are really awesome for getting people to your meetings. There's two ways you can do flyers. Um, if you're short on human power, which is not uncommon, um, you can make the traditional semester-long multi-purpose flyer. Um, find some catchy slogan like, questions about God, or don't believe in God, you are not alone, and then at the bottom have your entire you know, meetings Wednesdays at 7 in XXX room, so that you can leave them up for the whole semester and every Wednesday, people will know to come to so-and-so room and join your group meetings. That way, you only need to replace flyers that get torn down, get covered up, or get you know rained on and get dirty. Um, so this saves you a little bit of human power. The other way you can do it, if you have a lot of members who are really gung-ho about hanging flyers, and maybe if you have a staple gun, because those are nice, um, <laughs> is to make new flyers for every meeting. Um, post your discussion question. Um, if this week's discussion is about um, religious, uh, religious influence in women's choice, um, put it up on your flyers, because um, you may, at that week's meeting, attract a bunch of people from the feminist movement who want to come and see what you have to say. Um, so either way is a perfectly valid way to do some flyering. Chalking, also effective. Um, who doesn't love sidewalk chalk? Um, two other strategies that are really good for advertising for your meetings are using Facebook. You can create Facebook events uh, hosted by your group for your group meetings. Uh, you can then invite all the members of your group to those meetings. You can also message 
all of the members of your group about your meetings. I wouldn't recommend doing both. I would either invite them or message them. Um, otherwise, you end up in the position of being that guy who sends out all kinds of messages and you, you end up looking like spam. Um, but you can duplicate that with your email list because you will have people on your email contact list who are not in your Facebook group. Um, and so getting, making sure you hit both of those crowds is definitely a thumbs up advertising key. Flyers, in fact, are the new black. Don't hang black flyers, though. They're really hard to read. <laughs> Ooh, look, I made bullet points and then forgot to use them. <laughs> okay, number three, have snacks. You'll notice that we've had some cookies here. We have managed to provide coffee for you so that you're not, you know, really zombies this morning. Everybody seems to be fairly awake and alert. Um, same thing goes for your group meetings. Um, now, we're not saying you have to have catered banquets for every discussion meeting, but have a bag of potato chips. Have... Um, some pretzels, have some snack mix. Um, if you're having a, a bigger event or something where you want to have a bigger turnout, have a pizza or two. Um, but having those snacks, um, it's kind of like bribing people. It kind of like says, I know you're a college student, you've got a lot of stuff going on, but if you come to my thing, you get food. <laughs> so it gives you an edge over the things that other people might do. It also, for those people who, like me in undergrad, were way too busy for our good, didn't have time to eat, it means we eat. And so we would, we would go to the meetings where we get food, because that way we don't have to spend extra time eating. <laughs> College students, you know how this works. Um, I, there are two other things about food. I get asked a lot, well, don't people then just show up for the, for the food? Are you going to walk across campus for a couple of potato chips? Maybe. Maybe. You're desperate. He's, he's also desperate. Most people are going to walk to the vending machine on the first floor of their dorm and buy a bag of chips. Uh, now, if you're putting up signs all over campus that say, free pizza every meeting, yes, then people will come just for the food. But if it's just sort of the thing where people know, in your group know, that, hey, if I show up for this meeting, I'm going to get some potato chips. Um, you get the perk of it, um, but you're not going to end up with a lot of people coming just for the food. Even if people do just come for the food, maybe they'll stick around. Maybe they'll like what you have to say. Um, the other big thing, I've worked in food service for a lot of years, be safe. Do not give people food poisoning. They will not come back. <laughs> <laughs> um, you also want to check with your location, make sure that it's okay to have food in the room that you're going to be in, because you also want to get kicked out of your room. And you have to hang all new flyers, it's a big pain. Alright, we have some good food. Chips, pretzels, Doritos, etc. Things that come out of a bag that you open. Cookies are awesome. They don't have to be homemade. I'm really lucky that I have an other half who was like, I'll make 300 cookies. <laughs> but you know, Oreos are awesome. Um, snack mix. You can make your own if you're feeling industrious. You can also buy bags of pre-mixed snack mix or trailers. M&Ms are awesome. You get a big one pound bag of M&Ms passed around. Um, and grapes. Just make sure they're seedless because seeded grapes are really messy. Bad. Messy food. You don't want to make a mess, so you know, the, the, the chili dogs, probably not. Um, veggie trays, they seem like a good idea and they never go over well. You always end up with a bunch of vegetables and then you have to make stir fry for a week. Um, solely meat based food, um, how many people in this room are vegetarian? That is a disproportionate number of people. Um, whatever it is about our movement distract, attracts a disproportionate number of vegetarians, so please don't exclude them from your meetings by having only chili dogs. Oops. And uh, salmonella and E. coli, yeah, be safe, don't kill your people. <laughs> All right, number four, we want to include activities, which is also to say business meetings. Your group should ideally, you know, no matter how small you are, have two types of meetings. You should have your public meetings. That's the type of meetings that we're trying to get people to. You should also have business meetings, which are open to the public, anybody who can come Anybody who wants to come should be encouraged to come, um, but are really for the officers and the volunteers to get things done. If your regular meetings that are open to the public are 95% running the group and making decisions about the group and talking about the budget, people aren't going to come because it's boring. Um, so make sure that your group includes things that are fun. Have discussion meetings, bring in speakers from your campus. Um, we've had groups have arts and crafts night. Um, socials are awesome. <clears throat> it, I was tired when I was writing this presentation too. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> um, actually, I'm going to back up one second. Um, 
Okay, and two things. Um, little business is okay. If you're designing t-shirts, for example, and you want to have a vote on which t-shirt design to go with, that's obviously something that can go in your public meeting. Deciding where to order your t-shirts and how much we want to pay for them and how much we want to charge for them and so forth and so on, that should go in your business meeting. Um, the other half of this is that we have just put up, and you'll hear more about this later, um, a series of activity packets for things your group can do on our website. It's secularstudents.org slash activity packets. Um, and they're walkthroughs on how to do everything from bringing a huge speaker or hosting a bait to giving your group mohawks. <laughs> Mind the clock. Um, college students are busy, got a lot going on. Some people are more so than others. If you advertise that you have an hour long meeting, make sure it's an hour. Um, it be shorter than an hour, but don't go over. Um, now this is not to say that when the hour, hour mark hits, you, you say, okay, we're done, everybody get out. Um, by all means, continue to hang out, to socialize. Just make it clear when the official part of the meeting is over so that people who do have other places to be um, can leave without feeling like you know, they're cutting out in the middle. Likewise, if your meeting is supposed to start at 8 p.m., start at 8 p.m. Don't wait around until 8.15. You know, be on time, keep things running on time. Be respectful of your people. Two and a half hours is long even for a Harry Potter movie. <laughs> Don't make your meetings go that long. Get feedback. How are you gonna know how your group is doing if you don't talk to them about it. Um, so we want to know um, what's working, what isn't working, what people liked, what people didn't like, um, and what can you be doing better. There's a bazillion ways you can do this. You can get a clipboard um, and write a question at the top of it, pass it around during the meeting, so that as you know, you're discussing the meaning of life, people are asking, was this meeting awesome or did it suck? Um, you can have comment cards, you know, print out a couple pieces of paper and hand them out at the door and have people give them back to you when they get done. It's sort of like the conference eval forms that you might remember are in your book that you should turn into John before we leave, except John, I think, slept in this morning. He's not here yet. <laughs> um, you can, uh, you can just show, uh, have a show of hands. Um, hey, was this cool? Would you come to this event again? See how many people raise their hand. Uh, and then the key part of this is then listen to the feedback. If people say they love something, do it again. If people say they hated something, maybe you don't want to do that anymore. Beyond the meeting room. There is a whole wide world beyond the four walls in which your meetings hold place. Um, and your group doesn't end at those four walls. Your group should be a community. I know, obviously, I'm not going to dictate what your groups are going to be because your groups are your groups. But your groups are most likely a community of like-minded people. Um, and that will, that will maintain itself beyond the four walls of your meetings. Um, and so encourage it. Um, if you have an online discussion list, feed it. Um, encourage discussion. Get people talking. Get people to know each other online so that when they come to the meetings on Thursday nights, they're like, oh, hey, Bob, I loved what you had to say the other day. I thought it was really compelling. Um, get, your, get your group together. How many groups like to eat? I haven't met a, a free thought group yet that doesn't like to eat. We eat more than I think we do anything else. Um, but, you know, have, have meal-based socials. Go out for food after your meetings. Have Sunday brunches. I've had a couple of groups who have done Sunday brunches so big that they have had to relocate to accommodate the size of their Sunday brunches. Um, so, you know, food is awesome. Um, have Frisbee games, Ultimate Frisbee. Uh, you know, get together on the quad, hang out, that sort of thing. Go see movies together, hang out outside of the group. Foster your group outside of these meetings, and then the people will be more encouraged to come to the meetings and, sh and, and continue the community that you've been building. Now that we know how to get people to meetings, we're going to touch on a couple of ways to keep people from coming to meetings. <laughs> keep your group secret. Don't tell anyone unless you are absolutely 100% positively sure that they are an atheist. <laughs> Hide your meeting from meeting info. We have a website, but boy, we don't want to post our meeting info on there because somebody might find out and show up. <laughs> Change your meeting times and places every day. Now, sometimes this is unavoidable. If you're a new group or if you missed the deadline to reserve your room, sometimes you have no choice. Um, but see the above. If you're going to have to have, be switching around, make sure people know it. Publicize it. Put it in your announcements. Um, you know, if you say you're going to be in Wilson 103, and then every week there's a sign on the door that says go somewhere else, people are going to be like, Ugh. don't tell anybody if you do. 
<laughs> Old meetings are bad times for members. Um, what time is it? It's like 9.20 a.m. in the summer? Yeah. <laughs> um, include only business in your meetings. Meetings are for business, and that's all we're going to do. And then complain at every meeting about how people don't show up. Man, I wish more people would show up to meetings. Our members suck. <laughs> Give up after a single try. If you're trying a new idea, it might take a couple of tries to get it going. If you try it once and you're not seeing the results you want, it doesn't necessarily mean that you need to give it away. However, if it's clearly not working, give it up. <laughs> Decide that there is nothing that can possibly help with my group, because my group is so unique that these ideas just aren't going to work. Everything you've said today, that's not going to help my group. And refuse any offers of help that come your way. When all else fails, ask for help. I'm at Liz at secularstudents.org. Thank you for being here. Have another cup of coffee. We will reconvene at 9.30 this morning.